NOX radio reporter Lauren Kerbell, Jennifer Johnson of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, Roan County Sheriff David Haggard in New York, Defense Attorney David Schwartz in Pittsburgh, Defense Attorney Courtney Anderson in New York, clinical psychologist Dr. Patricia Saunders, but first to Kingston, Tennessee, and CNN correspondent Bob. Very quickly, Courtney Anderson, a few seconds left before we go to break. What kind of charges are these two looking at? <laughs> well, for one, a multitude of charges. Certainly, if this is correct, uh, the wife is going to be looking at uh, murder. Uh, this is very serious. A law enforcement officer was killed in the line of duty. And if these two were Bonnie and Clyde, I just want us all to remember how that ended in a hail of gunfire. And although I do believe this is premeditated, they planned a lot of this, it's also very stupid. I mean, it, for this to happen in front of witnesses, for him to kind of yell out, you know, shoot him, she's there, other people see her, they're not going to get away. They can run as far as they possibly can on foot or in stolen cars and vehicles, but it's not going to work. And I, I must say, this man is fascinating. This is the second time, I believe, that a woman a romantic interest has helped him to uh, effectuate one of his escapes. So I don't know what kind of Romeo or what kind of power he has over women. Tell it, Courtney. This is a good idea. I don't know what this guy's got, but it worked <laughs> on her, and she's not the first one. And the kicker is, behind bars, she got fired for bringing the guy food. It's absolutely incomprehensible. You know what? I just want to put all the defense attorneys at rest on the panel tonight. Tennessee does have the death penalty, and when these two come back, they may have a choice between the electric chair old Sparky for shooting dead a cop or the needle, lethal injection. Very quickly to trial tracking, it's day 73 since Natalie Holloway went... Okay, you're taking a look at George and Jennifer Hyatt. They made their escape yesterday. To Courtney Anderson, considering her background as a prison nurse, she would know very well the mode of transferring prisoners, don't you think, Courtney? Yeah, I do think so, and certainly, um, obviously, this is planned. It's not like she was just driving around, and then she turns the corner, and, oh, there's my husband, and, oh, my goodness, he says, shoot him, and, oh, my goodness, I happen to have a weapon on me. So, certainly, she did have that kind of information. Obviously, though, her judgment... I mean, her judgment is appalling. And as a defense attorney, uh, often we're the ones don't who have to tell clients. Don't you even say insanity. Don't even go there. No, 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 no. That's certainly not what I was going to say. What I was going to say is as a defense attorney, we're the ones who usually have to sit down and look these people in the eye after they have made these decisions and done these things that are blatantly stupid and say to them, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? I just cannot understand. And I know that's where I start off with clients and then try to move forward and see if we can develop a relationship where I can try to help them. But it's just unbelievable that a professional jeopardizes her job, jeopardizes her career, allegedly does this crime, and now potentially puts her life in danger if you're looking at a capital offense. And I assume, I guess, only for love. I guess it's all the about power love. of love. It's all about the love. David Schwartz, the reality is prosecutors very often, when they have a weak case on one co-defendant, a strike. Mexico. And of course, Courtney Anderson, this guy, Cullen, has a record of fraud selling shares in phony oil and gas uh, ventures. Do you think he has the resources to stay underground for a long time? We know he has millions. Well, then, yes, obviously the answer is he has the financial resources and probably also the, the wit, shall we say, since he's an established uh, person with a criminal record to uh, evade the law for a certain amount of time. But again, I think this is another example. This young woman, what was she thinking? What, what was, was she thinking? thinking? In terms and what of, was in the husband thinking? Gosh, I mean, the police show up in his door and say, the lady you married from the Ukraine, A, she's dead. B, she's got a 2005 gold Mercedes. Three, she's buying a house with another guy. You know, that's quite a lot to digest. It, it, the way that people create these myriad of webs of lies in their lives, and it's not unusual. I mean, we practice law. We certainly know that it's not unusual what people do behind closed doors and the kind of <laughs> duplicity that they get involved in. Man, and I you're not kidding. And, and David Schwartz, here's the kicker. This guy we know has a young boy we think either adopted from Mexico or, or staying with him, a friend of the family of some sort. Uh, if he, this guy has gone to Mexico, how hard is it going to be to get him extradited back? Whoa. Well, it's not going to be. Well, once they.